the word redress has come up a lot. Yeah. W- what does that mean? And I guess what's the idea outcome today moving forward? What happens next? Um, yeah, we've talked about this. We talked about this a lot as a design group. Um, what does redress mean? What's realistic? What can actually be achieved when so much harm has already happened? Mm. Um, and one of my colleagues talked about, you know, look, actually, there may not be justice. We may never be completely healed, but what is it that allows us to actually move on? And um, I think that's where that focus about next generation comes in, the prevention of any further abuse. Survivors, no. I'm already, you know, uh, yeah, for many, uh, some very elderly survivors, yeah, they, what can be achieved, they can't go back. You know, they can't go back in time. That that yeah. harm, that trauma can't be erased. Um, but, you know, I think redress needs to be wholesome or, or comprehensive. Um, and so what we looked at in our design is not only financial compensation, but uh, apologies, um, support services. And, you know, what we were advocating for is survivors being able to decide what is it that they need um, to heal and um, not trying not to put any parameters on that. Um, yeah. Mm. Chewie, you got anything else you want to wrap up with? Yeah, I, I, a couple of things. Um, obviously, the use of the word survivors implied that there were people that didn't survive state care. Mm. Um, and I... I, I there, there's so much and the stuff's gone on for so long we might not know the full list of 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 people who didn't survive this um i think the moment that this commission started doing its work a lot of people started shredding documents and resigning and leaving the country and all, all sorts of stuff the rats ran um i i think the the key thing is here for anyone to have any trust in this at all is that it doesn't happen again but we live in a time where oranga tamariki can still uplift children and we live in a time where our current government was was campaigning on boot camps taking kids off parents and and that sort of thing so Mm. I don't think any of us can look at the survivors that are going, oh, yeah, sure. I don't believe you. Um, I don't think we can put any doubt on, on what they're saying or where they're coming from. Um, have we learned any lessons? Mm. And then my, my other thought is on, on yeah, redress and com- compensation and that sort of thing. That's... I mean, how do you put a dollar value on the experiences that people have had that would come straight out of a horror story mm-hmm. in a lot of cases? Yeah. How do you write a check for that? Your trauma is worth this much. <laughs> but but that's what it's going to devolve into from a government point of view, is that there's there's a penalty that they'll sustain and then they'll they'll dicker on every cent past that and i i I would like it to be what do you guys need you know do you need extensive counseling do you need uh, you tell us um yeah it's not going to be that yeah, well, that's that's what we would like to see, absolutely. Um, and I think, yeah, I, I, you know, one of my colleagues who's worked in the disability sector says, well, actually, we, we have this idea that, well, we don't trust people um, to, we, we imagine that people are going to, it's going to be ridiculously expensive, um, that people are going to, I don't know, um, but actually in the disability sector, give people their own resources and they actually underspend. So I think it's about trusting. And I think that's a part of, that's what the National Apology was about as well, is um, for the general public to see survivors in a different way. Um, You know, people who've been done wrong, um, but people who have mana and people who deserve something better. Annabelle, 
One of the things I love about doing this is I love being the dumbest person in the room, you know, and getting on people who know far more. So I guess my last question to you is, what have we left out in this conversation? Like, what else do you need to tell us? What do you want to leave us on in case there's anything we've missed, which is an important fact for, for me to learn and for the um, people watching and listening? Yeah. Well, I do just, I guess, I think I would like to see this as the start of a conversation. So not the end. Apology is just the beginning. Um, I guess I would like to see, um, you know, the curiosity out there in the general public about um, not only what happened, but how did it happen? And how is it that we can collectively um, make changes, compel our politicians? How do we need to be different? Um, because I think this is a reckoning, not just for the government, but actually for us as a society. Yeah. Um, so I guess, yeah, that would be my parting word, I suppose, is stay curious, stay open. Um, and, and listen to survivors and continue to listen. Yeah. Dr. Annabelle Ahuriri Driscoll, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And as I always say to people for the first time, thank you for trusting us with your story, for coming on and having a bit of a chat. Um, appreciate your time and hopefully uh, everyone else got as much out of that as I did. If it's just me, that's okay as well, but hopefully <laughs> the others did as well. So thanks for coming on. Thank you very much. All right, all thank the best. Know.